into exile. I must go. Failed, I have. What of the boy? To Tatooine. To his family send him. I will take the child and watch over him. Until the time is right, disappear we will. In your solitude on Tatooine, training I have for you. And when he was full forty years old, he came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begat two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Damascus. I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. Hello there. The highest levels are involved in the conspiracy. Nancy Pelosi is Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine. We must be the great arsenal of democracy. 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 I love democracy. democracy. All who gain power are afraid to lose it. Fear. 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 We'll keep the local systems in line. Line. Truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. Point of view. Welcome to the Conspiracy in the Force podcast. Star Wars, conspiracies, and more. With your host, me, Conspiracy Kyle. Kyle. Rebellions are built on hope. Hope. For God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Darkness. As long as there's light, 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 we got a chance. 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 This is what Luke says before he goes to the toilet. This is Red Five. I'm going in. Good morning. Sunday morning. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. I'm your host, Conspiracy Kyle. On today's episode, we'll be discussing a concept that many Star Wars fans are aware of, but never had an actual name to put to the idea. This concept in Star Wars lore is called the Barash Vow. We'll talk about what this is, what characters in the Star Wars universe have taken this vow, or were assumed to have taken this vow, and then we will discuss the application of this vow in our lives, as well as biblical applications. So what exactly is the Barash Vow? The definition of the Barash Vow is mostly fleshed out in the Darth Vader comic series from 2017 called Darth Vader Dark Lord of the Sith, which takes place immediately after the events of Revenge of the Sith. At the start of this series, Palpatine tasks Vader with seeking out one of the remaining Jedi and to defeat them. Once he defeats them, he will become the owner of their lightsaber and then can turn it into his very own Sith lightsaber. In issue number two of this series, Vader accesses Imperial Archives, searching for remaining Jedi. However, his search is not for survivors of the Jedi Temple Purge that he just led. No, he is looking for Jedi who had left the traditional Jedi Order prior to Order 66 by way of invoking the Barash Vow.
Now, from the novel Into the Dark, which is part of the Star Wars High Republic series, which took place 100 years before The Phantom Menace, the Barash vow is defined as the following, quote, an extreme commitment to gaining ultimate communion with the Force. Those who took the vow spent years, sometimes even decades, in deep meditation and in solitude, end quote. Now, why would one choose to do this? In Vader's own words from this comic, he stated the following reason in further explanation. Any Jedi pursuing Barash has sworn to refrain from activities related to the Order, complete disengagement from anything but the Force. It is a type of penance. While a Barash taker would have felt the purge, they would not have allowed themselves to respond to it or take action of any kind. So his thought is that any Jedi who took this path would have avoided the Jedi Purge altogether, and likely would not have gone into hiding. But also, he believes that such a Jedi would have strong Force abilities, thus making their lightsaber a powerful Sith weapon if obtained. Now, the only Jedi that Darth Vader could find that met this criteria was Jedi Master Kirik Infala. This Jedi Master had been on his own mission away from the Jedi Order since before Anakin Skywalker even entered the Jedi Order. In his own words, as Darth Vader confronted him, quote, for my transgressions, I took the Barash vow to live alone inside the Force, until my true path as a Jedi became clear. To live outside the Order and take no action on its behalf, no matter the circumstances, even its end. Now after stating this, Infala then declared his Barash vow ended, and he engaged Darth Vader in a vigorous battle, which you can guess the ending. Vader defeated him and obtained his new lightsaber. Now, the story doesn't mention what transgressions led to Infala's Barash vow. To the story, it probably doesn't matter. What does matter is that Infala was on a solo mission for an undeterminable length of time. He knew when Vader approached that the Force was telling him that his vow was now over, and he needed to jump back into action for the good of the galaxy. Now, other Jedi had taken this vow as well. Going back to the High Republic era... A Jedi named Des Raiden took the vow after he was released from capture by the purely evil Sith creatures called the Drangir. Now what was different for Des was the fact that he had not committed any misdeeds to be tasked with this vow. He chose to take it voluntarily. Per Des, his connection to the Force was fading as a result of his Sith imprisonment. Quote, The healers have pieced it back together again, but it's shaky. The cracks are showing. It won't hold, not unless I commit myself with all my strength to renewing it. End quote. <coughs> now, probably the most famous of all Barash takers, albeit in an inferred manner, would be Obi Wan Kenobi. Now, the Kenobi miniseries makes this claim a bit of a stretch, since he attempted to defeat Darth Vader twice as a means to restore order to the Force, so he didn't necessarily stay out of galactic affairs. But that aside, we know that Obi-Wan spent most of his time in that 20-year period between trilogies in deep meditation and training. Unlike Infala, he knew that his vow would be for a defined period of time, until Luke came of age and needed Jedi training. Now, the exact circumstances would not be apparent to when he would need to jump back in, but the Force wouldn't make it known to him when he needed to jump back into the galactic struggle, and he found that moment after Luke had been attacked by the Sand People. And of course we can't forget Master Yoda, who put himself also into a self-imposed exile in the swamp on Dagobah, preparing for the day when he would further the Jedi training of the next generation. Now, some have made the claim that Luke Skywalker in the sequel trilogy had taken the vow, as he had isolated himself. But in my mind this makes no sense at all, because he had 100% cut himself off from the Force. Now, obviously, we know that the concept of the Force is not a direct parallel to the workings of God in our world. And likewise, the Barash vow is not a direct parallel to how God operates. But I can still find some synergies there. There is a parallel in the fact that, in the Bible, God took and used many people that committed sins and transgressions against him and put them on a path to redemption and deliverance for both themselves and others over long periods of time. One example of this is in the book of Exodus, regarding the story of Moses. Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15, 
tells the story of Moses murdering an Egyptian, hiding his body, and then fleeing from Egypt into the land of Midian. Now, in the Old Testament account, we do not necessarily know the time frame that he spent from escape to the advent of the burning bush and God's call to him to return and help liberate the Israelites from the Egyptians. But if we flash forward to the New Testament book of Acts in chapter 7, before Stephen was martyred for following the preachings and teachings of Christ, he stated that Moses was 40 when he left Egypt and was away for 40 years before he returned to Egypt. Another example, albeit a smaller time frame, is the Apostle Paul. Now, when he was known as Saul, the religious zealot slash persecutor of Christians, God met him on the road to Damascus and blinded him for three days before setting him on a path to redemption and worldwide missionary work. He also stayed in the town of Damascus for a long period of time before he ended up joining up with the disciples in Jerusalem. So again, a long time period. You could also make the claim that going back to Exodus after the Israelites escaped Egypt, that the 40 years they spent wandering in the wilderness after escaping was a form of penance to be paid as well. The difference here is that they did not learn their lesson and did not have true faith in God and therefore died in the wilderness before staking their claim in the promised land of Canaan. Now this parallel does seem to match up with the story of Jedi Master Kirik and Fala, where he was set on a path of penance for many years, but he was not able to withstand the true tests of evil when confronted with them. As likewise, the Israelites were not able to withstand the temptation of sin in the form of idol worship and faithlessness. So what's the real world application here? What does this mean for you and me? For me personally, right now I've been devoting myself to daily Bible study, and I've been tuning out many of the mainstream news stories on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, what have you. I'm not in tune with the latest stories, conspiracy events, false flags, and the like of our current day and age. Now does that mean that I don't care about what's going on? Not at all. Does that mean that I don't want to do some live streams and current events and break it all down? No. But I truly feel at the present moment that it's more important for me to put on the full armor of God as laid out in Ephesians 6. As this, I feel, is the best way to be prepared to give an answer to what I believe is true and what I believe is not true in our world, and just to have a good biblical reaction to world events and have references in the Bible to back those up. I want God to help guide my thoughts and actions and to teach me and train me in His ways, not my own. This is similar to the sentiment that is echoed by Des before he embarks on his Barash vow. Quote, I've always wanted action, excitement. I've wanted that a little too much. Jedi aren't meant to please themselves. We're meant to serve. Service doesn't mean only doing what you want to do. It means listening to the Force. I know what I have to do. End quote. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. On the next podcast, we'll cover the latest two Bad Batch episodes. May the Force be with you, but most importantly, God bless. Take care.